Who was Good evening, Miss Ginger? Everybody. Ginger was Candace. I thought I was Mrs. Howell. I would think I was We're, Mrs. Howell. I'm going to interrupt this TV trivia oh. conversation to call us to order at Spokane <laughs> City Council on Sorry. March 22nd. And Madam Clerk, would you take the roll? Council President Beggs? Here. Council Member Burke? Here. Council Member Cathcart? Present. Council Member Kinnear? Present. Councilmember Mum? Here. Councilmember Stratton? Here. Councilmember Wilkerson? Present. Let the record reflect that all council members are present. All right, and we have one reappointment. Reappointment of Jim Kirshner to a three year term on the Spokane Public Library Board of Trustees to begin on April 1, 2021, and expire on March 31, 2024. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. Any abstentions? Thank you, Mr. Kirshner. And for anyone who's watching, if you're interested, you can go to our um, City of Spokane uh, webpage and query uh, boards and commissions. They have lots of them, lots of opportunities, and when openings are coming up. And if you're interested in applying, you can reach out to the mayor's office uh, we'd love to have your input, so please consider joining. Um, next, we have an administrative report on the Flag Commission. Council Member Burke. <clears throat> yeah, thank you. Um, I've invited Josh here with us today. He's our chair. So, And then I think we also have a little presentation, but he's going to give an overview of the process we've done um, and kind of where we are right now and where we're heading. All right. Welcome, Josh. Uh, uh, good evening, uh, City Council. Um, I have a small presentation here that I can uh, I can go ahead and give if I can get permission to share. Uh, the primary purpose of this meeting is to sh share with you all the um, uh, the finalists that we've selected. Now we have thirteen. We have twelve uh, finalists, um, and. Uh, this is an opportunity to give the city council to take uh, take a chance to look at the uh, those finalists and uh, give us any feedback before we proceed to a final binding vote. Okay, great. I think he, you should have permission to share. Yeah, looks like I just got it. Give me a second yeah. here. Make sure I put the right screen on. We don't hand that out to just yep. anyone. So. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Let's see if this works. Uh, there we go. Awesome. All right. So these are our 12 finalists. So number one, two, three, four. Sorry about the low quality on this one. This one needs to be re-rendered, but it, it will it will look much better when we go to the vote. And that really is it. Um, <laughs> and now, very exciting. Uh, lots of lots of conversation in that presentation there. Um, I would be happy to answer any questions though at this point about any of those designs, or uh, if you have any other questions regarding the process. Well, tell well, Josh, why don't you? Yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was going to probably say the same thing. <laughs> okay, yeah. Why don't you go ahead and tell us um, about the process, Josh, that we've done? So, um, how we came up with these thirteen, and then where we go after this. Oh yes, yes, of course. Um, so the oh, am I? Is that me? I'm sorry. Am I the one who's causing that echo? My apologies. It. Oh, oh no, nope, about it. Me. Anyways, so our process so far is we solicited uh, a large number of uh, submissions back in uh, I believe it was October of last year. Uh, we received a little under four, a little over actually 400 submissions from the public. Um, during that time. Uh, from that point, we, the commission, which is composed of one representative for each of the three city council districts, uh, one member of the city staff appointed by the mayor, one, one member of the Spokane Arts Commission, two members of the uh, Spokane Tribe of Indians, and one youth representative 
uh, went through those 400 submissions, and we removed designs that we considered to be facetious or uh, in poor taste. We had some political statements. We had uh, the laser marmot uh, that we all expected to be getting at some point. Um, after that, we were left with a little under 300 remaining designs. Those were then put out to the public for comment. Um, we created a website uh, that was posted at the beginning of December of last year, at which point the public could vote on all 300 of those designs. Um, we made it clear this was a non-binding vote. Our goal was simply to get an idea of how the public felt about them. What we ended up doing was we took the top 100 designs uh, from that vote, and we examined those as a commission, and then we internally cast ballots uh, amongst the, the, the diverse representatives that we had on the commission to come up with a finalist set of 13. Um, unfortunately, uh, one of those 13 finalists did not respond um, after multiple attempts to the uh, get the legal waiver that was necessary to go ahead and proceed them to the vote. So there we were then reduced down to 12 finalists. And that's how we ended up with the, uh, the 12 that we have now. With the next step being that we're going to be, we've been working with the Spokane uh, City Library to put together a voting portal through their website, so you'll need a Spokane City Library card to vote. We've also been working with the Spokane Tribe to set up a voting portal through their uh, membership so that they can also get the opportunity to vote since a large number of tribal members live outside of the uh, county boundaries and therefore can't vote, can't get a city library card. Um, and that will allow the public, that will be a binding vote that will allow the public to choose from these 12 finalists the new design. Yeah. Good answer any questions. Questions? I have a question. I have a question. Yep. Councilmember Kinnear. And I have a question too when Lori's done. Great. So I'm, I'm assuming a lot when I look at some of these, uh, the symbolism. So the one that you have up on the screen, I'm assuming that's a ponderosa pine, but I don't know for sure. So I wonder, and I'm assuming that's a sun, duh. But I wonder if you could go through some of them if there's symbolism that isn't obvious and just explain. Yes, I actually can do that. Just give me one quick second. There, I have a document that has all of the artists' descriptions of their art. So pull that up real fast. Um, and negotiate my computer screen here slightly. So we're going to go back to the first one. Apologies for the, <laughs> the little, little bit crazy there. So this design was created by one uh right this is rachel clavaugh put this design together uh she noted hey josh that, your screen is gray because i think you have the other window open oh that's that's unfortunate so i can't, right. I can't both read the design and have the screen on at the same time They're yeah or or you can unshare your screen and then share it again with the document that has the description that's a wonderful idea thank you kate <laughs> could you email that document out as well i'd love to just be able to read it yeah, well, um, I believe I thought I meant to have it sent out for this meeting. I mostly yeah, I think it was sent out. Uh, if that didn't happen. All righty. Um, can you see this? Are you able to see the, the screen now? Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right. So this is our first uh, first design here. Uh, this was done by uh, Rachel Klaubaugh. Um She notes, uh, as, as you can see there, that uh, the color was selected as from the Lilac City. Uh, we put the fish there as a representation of the how the importance that the salmon had with the native culture here in Spokane, and uh, the flowers, obviously with the referencing the uh, the, the lilacs as well. Um, go to the next one. Uh, these were this this person's. Uh, we didn't. I didn't realize this when we did the vote, but this person was lucky enough to get two of their designs accepted. <laughs> They're the only person uh, so blessed. Um, uh, the first design here, as you can see, we have the, uh, the water representing the river, um, the, the, the little teepees representing the, uh, the native tribe. A um, little bit, that's a little bit of uh, inaccuracy as it turns out. Um, I just, I'm just noticing this now. This is a little bit, maybe a little bit of a problem there. Um, similarly, the, this design here, blue for the water, uh, we've got the four representing the, uh, the four uh, major Salish tribes beyond, out beyond just the Spokane tribe, and uh, also referencing the TP. Uh, this one here, um, uh, the artist, quite, quite a quite a long description on this one. Um, we got the sun for the children of the sun. We've got the river. We've got the waterfalls. Um, the the green for the uh, the forests. 
Uh, similarly, we've got this one, the sun, referencing the children from the sun, the, the river, the forest, the, the the artist in this particular case wants to talk about like the the, 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 the lines versus sort of the, the cleanliness of the natural environment that we live within. Scroll down. Uh, this one here, the, the two representing the mountains, um, the uh, Mount Spokane, Mount Kit Carson, um, the lilacs, the lilac city. Uh, this design here, very, again, we're, we're very similar uh, the, uh, influence for many of these. We've got the Children of the Sun reference with the sun there. We've got um, the yellow, just the, the artist particular didn't seem to give uh, anything beyond these, uh, the specifics of the, just to kind of a, it's a, it's a pleasant color, um, Wildlife City. This one was inspired by the 1912 flag. So we've, it's an update of the, which was the triangle um, design there. Uh, the, the sun for the children of the sun again. We've got the lilac, the lilac city, the, the blue and the green for the river and the uh, forests. Um, and uh, this one, as you mentioned before, it is a ponderosa, ponderosa pine. Um, we've got the, uh, the blue for the river, the uh, uh, sun for the children of the sun, the green referencing uh, the forest as well. Uh, this one also is a, a referencing back to the 1912 design with the general shape. We've got the, uh, the sun for the children of the sun, blue for the river, green for the forest. This one's a bit different. Um, uh, Children of the Sun here, we've got kind of a, a, an abstract reference to the Monroe Street Bridge here, the purple for the Lilac, uh, Lilac City. Um, another uh, 1912 flag reference with this one here, um, Children of the Sun, we've got the colors here referencing the, uh, the, 19, the 1974 uh, Expo colors, the, the Lilac for the Lilac City again. And that is all of them. Hopefully I didn't sound too robotic with that. My apologies. No. Great. Thanks this for- is, This is Karen. Can I ask my question? Yes. And then Council Member Cathcart after that. First, I have just a quick comment and then a question. Um, Josh, I want to thank you. I don't think people realize how involved you've been in this community and how much work you do. And um, I just admire your interest in all things city. I think it's, it's impressive, and I admire you for that. And hopefully someday I will see you on city council. I appreciate that, Karen. Thank you. So my question is, has the group thought about once you pick a design, and I really have three that I thought were perfect, have you thought about is the name Spokane going to be anywhere on that? So one of the actually one of the specific rules that we had for designs was they could not have any text on them. We, we ended up throwing out a, a number of designs for featuring uh, wording. The idea is we, we want to avoid text because when you when you're looking at a flag from a really long way away, you're not going to be able to read it, and it's it's harder to reproduce. It just and we felt that it flows better, and hopefully over time, you know, once we've chosen a flag and we start featuring it, we won't need to have the word Spokane on there. People will just will see that flag and know see it can relate to Spokane. Okay, that was my question. Thanks. That's fine, yeah. Josh, can you unshare your screen? Oh, yes. Yeah, my apologies. Thanks. Uh, Councilmember Cathcart and then Councilmember Mum. Uh, I will just note that, um, oh, Candace, did you have something? I'm sorry. No. Nope. Councilmember Cathcart, Cathcart and then Councilmember Mum. Yes. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, just, just wondering how you guys are planning to uh, engage the community in the vote and, and try to get as many folks participating as you can. So uh, we're working on a, a bit of a social media campaign with the uh, city library that we will be will be releasing uh, posts on our uh, both the library social media feeds, um, our uh, Spokane Flag Commission media feeds, and we'll be reaching out to um, stakeholders. There's a number of people who have contacted us with interest about this that we're we're sure will be happy to boost this. Um, we're going to be this is going to be something that hopefully we're going to be posting about this um, online through our, our various channels two to three times a week for the duration of the vote, which will be one month, um, beginning with the, uh, the first Monday in April, which I believe is April 9th, um, going through, I believe that will be the first Monday in May. Um, our hope is that we'll, through the library promotion, this will get us in front of a lot of faces and um, 
Additionally, we're, everyone who's on the, their mailing list will get a notice about this. Everyone who's on the Spokane Tribe's mailing list will get a notice about this. So we're, 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 pleasantly, uh, we're pleasantly hopeful that we're going to get some decent coverage, um, not to mention that the local news has been very fond of this, this project and has been giving us some great coverage, so which, we, which, we, which we like a lot. Councilmember Mum. Well, so my question is, um, you know, all of this was done with uh, electronic um, computer-aided artistry, and I find that a little fascinating. You know, that's kind of something new, right? Um, of course, the artists have been using it for decades, but uh, when people made flags, uh, they made it with cloth and designed it very differently. So I'm assuming this will be translated over to sewing and cloth, and that's something to keep in mind. Some of those shapes are not the easiest things to sew, <laughs> uh, I, or maybe it'll just be stenciled on. I don't know, but that might be something to discuss is what material it will ultimately end up on and how that will be mass produced. Um, just thought I'd throw it out. Um, we've already, we, we, we have reached out to some of our purchase companies for production. Um, most flags nowadays are screen printed, so you can, you can, you can actually print a pretty complex design. I, I do recognize that. I, I think most of these designs wouldn't be too terribly hard to sell if they still wanted to challenge themselves a little bit with that. But uh, nowadays, it's, with, with tech and so on, it's, it's amazing what you can put on a flag. I think you're right. I'm just thinking of Betsy Ross. That'd be a big job. All right. Did I get all the comments, questions? So I had one crazy idea. I thought I thought I better run it by you, Josh, before I did it on my own. So it's up up to you. So I had this idea that council members could pick flags and uh, start their own little promotion uh, in their networks and, and try to get people on that. So, but before I did that, I wanted to make sure. Then you don't have to tell me right now. You can think about it and talk to your committee. But if you don't want us weighing in, there's that. But if you're like, oh, no, let's uh, – I'm going to challenge Councilmember Stratton for my uh, my version versus her version and, uh, you know, try to do that. So um, – but but before we do that, we'll give you a, a couple of days to think about that, whether you think that's yeah. a win or not. I, mean, I, I I do like the idea. I, I'll let me run it past the other the other uh, the other commission members to before I give you any say on that. But yep. I mean, you're all private citizens. You can have your opinions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right, Councilmember. And Kimmer. I just wanted to say, yeah, I just wanted to say quickly that um, we have already been looking into um, getting stuff printed because we got an allocation of five thousand dollars from our last budget, and so uh, we want to. Before we announce the winner and um, present it, we'll get it printed and hopefully um, work with some local businesses to see if they want to get, you know, mugs or shirts or stickers printed also, and we can all come out with it together. So it'll be kind of like a nice rollout effort, and I think it'll be perfect timing because it's kind of going to be towards the, you know, summer and mm -hmm. fall, and so we'll be kind of hopefully wrapping up COVID and everyone will have their shots. And so I think it'll just give some great pride to our city beyond um, just being able to get out and go shopping and walk around and things like that. So nice. I'm pretty excited about it. And um, thank you, Josh, for all your work. You've done a great job managing this um, committee and, uh, and it's been a really, bla a really great experience. So yeah, yeah. thank you guys. And, and thank you, council member Burke. Um, for having this idea and pursuing it now that it's almost here and seeing those great designs, you know, can almost experience it. I'm super excited for our city to have it. So great job. Um, Thank you for letting me speak to you. Have a good day. Yep. I was noting on my agenda that we've sort of gotten away from giving council committee reports and don't worry, I'm not going to give one for today, which was a uh, public infrastructure uh, environment and sustainability, but I just wanted to note one of the reasons we we haven't been doing it is that they're on our Facebook page. You can watch them Facebook Live or go watch it. And we also, you know, all our committee meetings these days are uh, captured on video. And if you want to go to video.com slash Spokane City Council, you can watch any of our committee meetings or study sessions or council meetings. So um, rather than give you a report, you can see it for yourself. Vimeo. What did I say? Video. Oh, it is Vimeo, not video. So Vimeo.com slash Spokane City Council. 
All right, with that, we have a special budget ordinance. Ordinance C36022, amending ordinance number C35971, passed by the City Council December 14, 2020, and entitled An Ordinance Adopting the Annual Budget of the City of Spokane for 2021, Making Appropriations to the Various Funds of the City of Spokane Government for the Fiscal Year ending December 31, 2021, and providing it shall take effect immediately upon passage and declaring an emergency and appropriating funds in general fund from private grants. National League of Cities, $10,000 to other miscellaneous charges, same amount. This action budgets the revenue and expenses associated with the 2021 Leadership and Community Resilience Grant from the National League of Cities. All right, there's no community comment on this. Any council commentary? Seeing none, we'll have a roll call. Council Member Mum. Aye. Council Member Stratton. Aye. Council Member Kinnear. Aye. Council Presidents and I, Council Member Burke. Aye. Council Member Cathcart. Aye. Council Member Wilkerson. Aye. All right. That passes seven to zero. There's no emergency ordinances. But we're at resolutions. Resolution 2021-19, acknowledging and recognizing the tribes and tribal people in the Spokane area and the surrounding region, establishing regular public land acknowledgments, inviting the tribal councils in the region to take part in regular consultations, and establishing a tribal liaison to continue to build strong relationships between the tribes and the city of Spokane. Um, we do have some public testimony, but I wanted to give Council Members Wilkerson and Stratton a chance to tee this up if you wanted to. Okay, Karen. you want to start? Yep. I'll let you lead on this one. I would just, um, I'll keep this short. I think that this is a very heartfelt uh, proclamation um, to publicly honor and respect um, not only the Spokane tribe, but all tribal people, um, and to respect the land that we inhabit, which is Spokane tribal land. Um, I am proud that it supports and encourages a stronger um, and more productive relationships with the tribes. I think we get there. We've been close a lot of times, but it's usually been through events, powwows, um, dedications, that kind of thing. But I really see this as something that the council is acknowledging um, the relationship, inviting the relationship, having regular check-ins, regular partnerships going year round um, so that we can strengthen uh, those relationships with the tribes. It started, I think, with Wistock's Way that we were able to get that name change done. I think we're going to see more of that. But we need to do that with input from not only the Spokane tribes, but the surrounding tribes and the urban Indians as well. So I am proud to be part of this. Thank you, uh, Council President and Sam Wilkerson, for um, helping put this together. And I think this is a first step in a publicly um, committed relationship to the tribes that will um, will go a long way to improve um, economic development in the city of Spokane. I've always said that I think the powwow at the fall should be a, a bigger event. It, it should be an event that people come from all over to see on the river and to learn the history of the tribes and to see a powwow and participate. So I see this as a beginning and I'm happy to be part of it. So thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. I just want to echo Council Member Stratton's words. Many of them are the same as mine. I do see this as a start. When I first came on Council, the first thing I talked about was a land acknowledgement, and they said it's in the works, it's in the works. So obviously, um, we are long overdue to take this step to make sure that they feel part of the city that they are named after and going forward, strengthening those relationships. It is a start. Um, we don't have this down perfect. 
We're going to have to work through some issues and definitely some opportunities together, but I believe Spokane will be better for it in our commitment to the work with the tribes in our area, and I look forward to being a part of that. All right. Thank you for the tee up. And we have two speakers, uh, Jennifer Lebret and Nicolette Ockeltree. And if for speakers, please make sure that you're on the phone and uh, you can hit star three. And so Jennifer Lebret, if you're there. All right, and before you start, Jennifer, I just want to acknowledge the work that you and your colleagues uh, accomplished in getting us the first draft of the land acknowledgement that we then worked with to make it the cities and then uh, worked with the Tr Spokane Tribal Council as well. And we've submitted to other tribal peoples in the area as well to get their feedback. But I just want to thank you, Jennifer, ahead of your uh, talking, but you have up to three minutes. Go ahead and introduce yourself and I'll start the timer once you start talking. Thank you, City Council. Ah, Hicksel Halt, Hissia. Jennifer Fluhi Squess. Good evening. I am Jennifer Labrette. I'm a member of the Spokane Tribe and come to you this evening from the unceded ancestral lands of the Spokane Nation. I am testifying this evening in support of the Spokane City Council's acknowledgement of the Tribal Lands Resolution. As stated in the proposed land acknowledgement, it is time to recognize and act upon the truth and actions we can take towards restorative justice. We are gr grateful to be on the land of the Spokane people and ask for the support of the land as we work in unity towards our agreed upon goals during this gathering. I call upon you to agree to work as one heart, one mind and one spirit to stop acts that are continuing to traumatize Native Americans and other oppressed people. I give this thanks to my ancestors, relatives, and non-Native partners who have made this consideration possible. Lim Lim, thank you. Thank you for everything. Uh, uh, Nicolette, if you want to hit star three. Nicolette, go ahead and introduce yourself. You have up to three minutes. Hello, I'm Nicolette Ockeltree. Um, I am in favor of this resolution. It's critically important that we acknowledge and honor the tribes in the Spokane area and surrounding regions. So I appreciate that you are committing yourself to establishing regular uh, public land acknowledgements, inviting tribal councils in the region to take part in regular consultations, and establishing a tribal liaison in an effort to continue to build strong relationships uh, between the city of Spokane and, and the local tribes. Although I'm not a member of the Spokane tribe or a direct descendant of the Spokane tribe, my great-great-grandfather was Jim Thorpe, uh, a member of the Sac and Fox Nation and the first uh, Indigenous American to win a gold medal in the Olympics. During his life, he struggled a number of times with balancing the representation of his ancestors with the systemic troubles of being represented in a country with a history of oppressing and ostracizing Indigenous people. I hope that the efforts you are making here today in this resolution will facilitate the kind of representation and acknowledgement that our local tribes deserve. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right. Any council commentary? All right. Um, I will just uh, say that I had a chance to talk with Chair Evans of the Spokane Tribe uh, about this, and I invited her to come address us on April 19th, right before Earth Day, um, and to give us a report on the land, air, and water. And we will read the acknowledgement formally for the first time on, on, on that day, I told her, and we look forward to annual presentations from her. And I've also spoken with uh, representatives of the urban Native American population and uh, told them that as long as I'm council president, I'll invite them to come on Indigenous Peoples Day in October and give a report on the urban population. And we look forward to council, to negotiating with the mayor to appoint someone from her um, administration to be the official liaison uh, to the tribes in the area so they can consult on issues of um, mutual interest. So I'm super excited about this and appreciate all the people 
who've worked on this, uh, getting us to this place and the spirit in which it was brought. So with that, we'll have a formal roll call. Councilmember Mum. Aye. Councilmember Kinnear. Aye. Councilmember Stratton. Aye. Council Presidents and I. Councilmember Burke. Aye. Councilmember Cathcart. Aye. Councilmember Wilkerson. Aye. All right. That passes seven to zero. And that brings us to our next resolution. Resolution 2021-20 forming an ad hoc housing action subcommittee of the city council's urban experience committee. And council member Kinnear, do you want to tee this up? You're the. Well, I could, it's, so, it's pretty self-explanatory and it's a, a subcommittee that's going to inform us going forward and made up of people from the community. So it's not us informing us if that makes sense so yep. it's pretty simple okay and applications are already out um, for that uh, we have one um, requested public speaker that's nicolette ockletree nicolette if you want to hit star three all right go ahead and introduce yourself you have up to three minutes Uh, thank you. Hi, this is Nicolette Ockletree again. I just quickly wanted to say thank you for this resolution and uh, developing this subcommittee, and that I hope that it will include a representative of the Spokane tribe, um, a houseless citizen, and at least one tenant. Thank you. You're welcome. It will include lots of representation from lots of groups that don't normally get to participate, so I appreciate those sentiments. Uh, any other council commentary? All right. Again, this is work that's been long in coming, but it will particularly inform us on 1590 funds, 1406 funds, and the city's approach to homeless, and also the city's approach to increasing the inventory of housing for everybody, that we're kind of a victim of our own success in Spokane right now. Uh, so we're hoping to get lots of voices, uh, bring them to council, and share them with the administration as well. So with that, let's have a formal roll call. Councilmember Mum. Aye. Councilmember Stratton. Aye. Councilmember Kinnear. Aye. Council Presidents and I. Councilmember Burke. Aye. Councilmember Cathcart. Aye. Councilmember Wilkerson. Aye. All right. That passes seven to zero. We're on to some first reading ordinances. The second one we have a council president. Oh, sorry, we have. I believe yes. we we added you are right. another resolution. You are so right, Councilmember Mum. Pro tem Mum, <laughs> keeping me honest. Yes, we have a resolution, and um, we just added it at our three thirty agenda today. So I'm going to ask uh, Madam Clerk to read that for us, and um, we have one. Um, speaker from the public who's requested to speak and then, but go ahead and read that okay resolution number 2021-2020 or excuse me resolution number 2021-25 a resolution condemning and combating racism xenophobia and intolerance against asian americans and pacific islanders and, re and restating the city of spokane's commitment to diverse inclusive community free racism for all its residents Whereas advancing inclusion and belonging for people of all races, national origins, and ethnicities is critical to guaranteeing the safety and security of all residents of Spokane. And whereas during the coronavirus, hereafter COVID-19 pandemic, inflammatory and xenophobic rhetoric has put Asian American and Pacific Islander, hereafter AAPI, persons, families, communities, and businesses at risk. And whereas despite these increasing acts of intolerance, Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders have made our nation and city more secure during the COVID-19 pandemic 
and throughout our history serving as health care providers, first responders, and in many other essential roles. And whereas each of us has a personal responsibility to prevent the spread of misinformation, condemn violent acts in any form, support all fellow community members, and reject stigma, hate, and bias in all its forms, and whereas there is an urgent need for the community at large to unite and come together to support the AAPI community and report incidents of hate and bias, especially as we continue to recover together from the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic, and whereas one of the goals of the City of Spokane's Joint Strategic Plan agreed to by the City Council and the Mayor is to create a compassionate community so that all people can feel safe, empowered, and welcome, emphasis added. And whereas the Spokane Municipal Code prohibits discrimination because of race, religion, creed, color, sex, national origin, marital status, familial status, domestic violence, victim status, age, sexual orientation, gender identity, honorably discharged veteran or military status, refugee status, disability, the use of a guide dog or service animal, or the use or eligibility for the use of housing choice or other subsidy, pro subsidy program or alternative source of income. And whereas the City Council is establishing an equity policy engagement communi community working group, which will make specific policy recommendations to the City Council, establish and maintain genuine and sustained engagement in our community, and be representative of the broad diversity that exists in Spokane. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City of Spokane states its unequivocal support for our Asian American and Pacific Islander neighbors in Spokane, and strongly urges everyone in Spokane to cre create and maintain a compassionate community every day by supporting our Asian American and Pacific Islander neighbors so that all people in Spokane are safe and welcome here. Be it also resolved that one of the city of Spokane's highest priorities should be the enforcement of existing municipal laws which protect the civil rights of all people in Spokane, particularly the human rights protections codified in Title 18 of the Spokane Municipal Code. Be it further resolved that the City Council urges the administration to place a high priority on the expeditious staffing of a City Office of Civil Rights and to provide in language and culturally competent City resources. Be it further resolved that the City of Spokane supports the provision of crisis intervention support and mental health services for our community members who have experienced harm and any other needed support for all immigrants and refugees in Spokane. And be it finally resolved that the City of Spokane intends to support actions at the State Legislature which improve the data collection of enforcement of and the penalties for the commission of hate crimes in our state. All right, as I mentioned, we have one community member who wants to speak, and that's Nicolette Uckletree. Nicolette, if you want to hit star three. Go ahead and introduce yourself again, and you have up to three minutes. Thank you so much for this resolution. I really appreciate you guys taking your time to acknowledge uh, the need for something like this. And in particular, I hadn't, wasn't able to read the entire resolution because it wasn't publicly available yet since you guys just did it earlier today. But I'm really glad to hear that it included uh, verbiage on trying to, you know, really encourage the administration to go ahead and follow through with the commitment to getting the Office of Civil Rights up and running. It seems like every day we are reminded of how important that is that we get it up and running, and uh, I just don't want it to be too late uh, because it seems like these are the kinds of times where we actually need to be preventative and we need to educate, you know, those who get sort of caught up in that misinformation so that they don't make it a more dangerous place for um, our citizens to live. So thank you for including that at the end of that resolution, and I really hope that you continue to put pressure on the administration to get the Office of Civil Rights up and running. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Council commentary. Council Member Kinnear. So thank you, Nicolette, for bringing that up. For the record, the council has funded the Office of Civil Rights for the past four years. It is still not staffed. I brought this up at a committee meeting today asking when is this going to happen? Didn't get an answer, just that we're working on it. And I just, for the record, we've been working on it for four years. It's time to get off the pot and really do something. So if I sound too strident on this, it's because I'm really serious that this needs to happen as soon as possible. And I'm hoping this administration will do what the last administration could not, and that's actually staff this office. Thank you. Thank you. Other commentary? Councilmember Cathcart. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I guess I would just say 
there's no one who can really speak to this better than, than my wife. Uh, and uh, she, she really is an incredible lady. And, and this weekend had the opportunity to share some of her experiences that she's dealt with as an Asian American woman with discrimination and, and some pretty, pretty hateful language directed towards her. And I'll tell you, hearing about some of the, the hate filled, harmful words that are, are directed towards your spouse is pretty, pretty eye opening. And to see how upset that, that, that results, uh, in, in your, uh, significant other, uh, it just, it's really a difficult thing to deal with. So I'm, I'm really just, I'm really proud of, of her for, for speaking out, talking about these issues of importance. And I'm, I'm, uh, grateful to have the opportunity to vote in favor of, of this resolution tonight. So thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Wilkerson. Thank you. Uh, first, the Councilmember Kinnear, I totally support what you're saying. It sounds like so many other things that have been left unfinished in our city government that we need to really just put our foot on the pedal and lean into it. This past Saturday, I was honored to be at the rally along with uh, Council Member uh, Catcart and Council President Beggs, honoring the Asian women who were killed. It was a beautiful sight to see so many Asian and Pacific Islanders gathered together. Um, it was sad for the reason we were there, but it was uplifting to see another part of Spokane that we don't really get to see. So. I support this resolution, and I have to also acknowledge uh, Council Member Cathcart's wife, Bina, uh, who did an amazing job, and all the others who spoke on Saturday, that we are continuing to create a city for everybody, and everybody means everybody. So, again, I support this tonight. Thank you. Any other commentary I will just briefly say that it was very powerful to hear people on Saturday tell their stories it's just so unbelievable how some people treat other people particularly people who have been marginalized in the past and to think that we in Spokane have so many of our residents who are, who literally walk in fear because of the color of their skin or their culture or some other part of their identity that somebody else hates. And I've been on council enough that we've had several rev resolutions for several hate incidents. And as hard as it is to have yet again, I'm so proud of our community to stand up for the people around us. And I really, that's really the first thing we just have to do is just stand with our neighbors and say that we will be there and we'll speak out against it. And then the next thing we have to do is say, we're going to put our money where our mouth is and we're going to actually act and change laws and change budget priorities and improve things. And we have the ability, we know how, we know what to do. There's so many things. And if ever in our, in my lifetime, there's never been such an outpouring of people coming together to support people that I've observed. And so I just continue to call us uh, to speak to power and say, let's get this done, Spokane. So thank you so much. Um, let's have a vote. Councilmember Mum. Aye. Councilmember Stratton. Aye. Councilmember Kinnear. Aye. Council Presidents and I, Councilmember Burke. Aye. Councilmember Cathcart. Aye. Councilmember Wilkerson. Aye. All right. That passes seven to zero. Now we're at first reading ordinances, and the second one is going to have community testimony. So why don't you read the first two, and then I'll invite that testimony. Okay. Ordinance C36023, relating to the purpose of the Design Review Board, amending Spokane Municipal Code, Section 4.13.015. Ordinance C36024, relating to residential zones, primary uses, downtown zones, limited use standards, and off-site noise impacts, amending Spokane Municipal Code Section 17C.110.100, 17C.124.110, 17C.220.060. 
And just a reminder for anyone watching, uh, under our new council rules, we allow the public to testify at first reading ordinances, which is usually the week before final reading and passage, just to give us um, input on it. So we have one person signed up to testify on this, and that is Nicolette Ockeltree. Nicolette. Hello. Um, my comment might be a little bit nitpicky, but I gather that that's kind of what you're doing here is doing the, the homework to make sure everything is all, uh, you know, the attention to detail is there. And so the section that I'm concerned with is 17C.220.060, the land use standards and offsite impacts for noise. Uh, it says amend cross-reference from SMC 10.08.020 public disturbance noise repealed to SMC uh, 10.08D.090 public disturbance noise. But then it goes on in the next line to reference SMC 10.08D, and it calls it public disturbance noise, but that section is actually called noise control, and that section is a broader section of the overall sets of noise ordinances and not the specific one of public disturbance noise of the 10 8 D90. So I just want to make sure there's an error there, obviously, because it's saying it's two different ones. But moreover, if there's a choice between whether or not it's specifically the public disturbance noise or more generally noise control, I think that we should be looking at the more general one so that all of the uh, land use standards and offsite impacts are beholden to all of the rules underneath all of the noise uh, control sections, if that makes sense. So if somebody could look at that to make sure that was done uh, correctly, then that's really um, all I care about in this section. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you. All right. If you would like to read the rest of the first reading ordinances. Okay. Ordinance C-36025 relating to environmental standards, SEPA categorical exemptions and threshold determinations, amending Spokane Municipal Code Section 17E.050.080 Appendix B. Ordinance C-36026 relating to construction standards, notice of hearing and awnings, amending Spokane Municipal Code Section 17F.010.050 and 17F.040.140. And Ordinance C-36027 relating to Design Review Board Administration and Procedures, Land Use Application Procedures, Land Use Applications, PUD, Vesting Plan, Unit Developments, and Subdivision Design Standards, Amending Spokane Municipal Code Section 17G.040.040B, 17G.060.020A3, 17G.060.070B5C, 17G.070.220A, and 17G.080.070C5. Further action is deferred on the first reading ordinances. All right. So those will all be on our agenda for hearing and passage next week. That brings us to the end of our agenda. And I'm about to adjourn us. We meet again on Thursday at 11 for study session. And then uh, next Monday, um, we have, yeah, we have a public safety committee Monday. Our two public safety committees in one month uh, because we won't meet that first uh uh, week in April for spring break. So anyway, thanks everyone for everyone's work this week and please take care of yourself. And if you can take care of somebody else and please remember and share with people that we have so much more in common than difference with that. We're adjourned. <laughs>